I, I, I'll start it off. Good afternoon, all. I'd like to say happy holidays. And we're going to start our meeting, our meeting off today with a, uh, a series of our um, affiliate uh, company meetings. But before we do that, I'd like for us to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Thank you. So for the record, there's a series of these individual meetings. So we'll go through the uh, budget, a, a budget presentation by uh, uh, Director Fred Heron. And then we'll go from one to one, and then we'll come into our regular scheduled meeting. So the first one that we're going to um, to um, view is Landsman Family LLC. And so I'd ask the clerk to take the roll call. Thank you. President Lewis Jordan? Here. Secretary Olivia Diaz? Here. Treasurer Fred Heron? Present. Director Valerie Craig? Present. Director Michael Disman? Here. Director Scott Black? Here. Director William McCurdy? Present. Director Tick Seegerbloom? Here. Director Dan Shaw? And Director Lushana Turner. Here. A quorum is present, and we are in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law. Thank you, Madam Chair. Can I have a, a, a motion for the approval of the agenda? So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. It's been approved in the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Passes. Okay. Um, first item, next item on the agenda is uh, public comments for items on the agenda. Are there any public comments? Yeah, public comments for this agenda item? Yes, ma'am. Oh, not the whole, not the regular board. Yes, ma'am, this is just one. Just this, this is just item, yes. Oh, okay, I'll wait till the regular board. Thank you. Are there any other comments or any comments on this agenda item? Hearing none, next item would be the approval of the operations budget for Landsman's Garment Apartments. And I'll have uh, board member Fred Heron report out on this. Um, good evening, uh, board members. Um, today we're asking the board to approve Landsman Gardens Apartments uh, fiscal year budget ending December 31st, 2023. Uh, attached for their review. Um, this property is also managed by Cornerstone. I'm not sure if they're here. Um, he's back in the back if you got any questions. Um, we uh, ask you to, this budget covered 12 months estimated receipts and expenditures for the period ending December 31st, 2023. And we're asking the board to approve this budget. Uh, this is a, a, a rent, rental assistant demonstration project that was converted um, in 2014. And we're asking the board to uh, approve this item. If you have any questions, uh, myself or uh, uh, Kyle, uh, Jason, Justin, would be uh, available to ask any questions. No questions? No questions. Is there a motion to approve? I second. Okay, there's a motion to approve and second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Motion carries. There's another citizen participation. Are there any comments from the from the um, audience on items that um, any additional items regarding Landsman Garden? Seeing none, I move that we adjourn the meeting. So moved. Thank Second. You. All in favor? Aye. Meeting adjourned. Next item on our agenda is the uh, is Bigler Estate. Um, just point of clarification, do we have to do a roll call for each one? We do. Okay, roll call. President Jordan? Here. Secretary Diaz? Here. Treasurer Heron? Present. Director Craig? Present. Director Disman? Here. Director Black? Here. Director McCurdy? Present. Director Seegerbloom? Here. Director Shaw? And Director Turner? 
A quorum is present, and we are in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Is there an approval for the um, on the agenda? It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Very good. Thank you. So, next item is public comment. Are there uh, any public comments on on regarding items on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on to our next item, the approval of the operating budget for Beagler fiscal year ending December 31st, presented by CFO Craig Heron. Uh, good afternoon, board. Um, attached is the Beagler State Department budget for FY 2023, which is also managed by Cornerstone Management Company. Uh, this budget also covers 12 months of estimated operating receipts and expenditures um, and some non-routine expenditures. Uh, upon approval, we will ask the board uh, to approve this budget. This budget is also a rental assistant demonstration project, which was converted in 2016. And staff is asking board to, to approve this item as presented. Are there any questions? If there are no questions, I move for approval. It's second. been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Motion carries. Is there any citizen participation on this item? Seeing none, is there a, um, a motion for adjournment? I'll move to adjourn the meeting. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. The next item is on uh, Auto Meridia. Roll call, Madam Clerk. President Jordan. Oops. Present. Present. Secretary Diaz. Here. Treasurer Heron. Present. Director Craig. Present. Director Disman. Yeah. Director Black, Here. Director McCurdy, Present. Director Siegerblum, Here. Director Shaw, and Director Turner. A quorum is present and we are in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Is there a motion for the approval of the agenda? Yes, I move to approve the agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Okay. Uh, is there a public comment on this item? Seeing none, we'll go on to number four, um, the presentation of the budget. Mr. Heron. Um, <clears throat> attached is, for your review is Auto Marita Desert Villa budget for fiscal year 2023, uh, which is also managed by Cornerstone Management Company. Uh, this budget also covers 12 months of operating ex receipts and expenditures. Um, upon approval of the board, we are asked the staff is asking the board to approve this budget as presented. Uh, this budget is a fixed finance project, project which was converted in uh, 2003. Any questions? There are no questions. Move approval. It's been moved. Second. Moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Motion carries. Is there any citizen participation? Is there a motion for adjournment? Mr. President, I move to adjourn. Second. Been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Meeting adjourned. The next item is Vera Johnson B. Madam Clerk, take the roll, please. President Jordan. Here. Secretary Diaz. Here. Treasurer Heron. Present. Director Craig. Here. Director Disman. Here. Director Black. Here. Director McCurdy. Present. Director Siegerblum. Here. Director Shaw. And Director Turner. A quorum is present and we are in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law. Thank you. A motion for the approval of the agenda. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? First item on the agenda is public comment. Seeing none. Um, next item would be the approval of the operating budget for Vera Johnson B. Presented by Fred Heron. Um, attached for your review is the Vera Johnson B apartment budget for FY 2023. This, this budget is managed by, managed by Hand Management Company. Uh, the budget covers 12 months of operating receipts and expenditures. Uh, upon approval, um, where the board is, staff is asking the board to approve this budget as presented. Uh, this is a, is a rental assistant demonstration project as well, which was converted in uh, fiscal year 2016. Are there any questions? There are no questions. Move approval. Second. 
Aye. Thank you. I'll move to adjourn the meeting. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Or we need second. a second. Yes, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Now Aye. meeting is adjourned. Okay, thank you. Uh, next item would be Rose Garden Senior Apartments. Madam Clerk, take the roll. President Jordan. Present. Secretary Diaz. Here. Treasurer Heron. Present. Director Craig. Present. Director Disman. Here. Director Black. Here. Director McCurdy. Present. Director Segerblum. Director Shaw and Director Turner. Yes. A quorum is present and we are in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law. Could I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Okay, motion carries. Any public comment on this item? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next item <coughs> approval of the operating budget for Rose Garden. Frederick Heron. Um, attached for your review and approval is the Rose Garden apartment budget for FY 2023. Uh, this budget is also managed by Hand, hand Management Company. Uh, the budget co covers 12 months of operating receipts and expenditures. Uh, as of December 31st, 2023, uh, staff is asking this board to approve this budget as presented. Any questions? Motion for approval? I move for approval. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Aye. Motion carries. Citizen participation? Is there any? Seeing none, is there a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second? All right. Yes. Meeting adjourned. And then uh, the next item would be Espinoza Terrace. Madam Clerk, take the roll, please. President Jordan? Here. Secretary Diaz? Here. Treasurer Heron? Present. Director Craig? Director Disman, Here. Director Black, Present. Director McCurdy, Present. Director Segerblum, Director Shaw, and Director Turner. Yes. A quorum is present and we are in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Is there a motion for the approval of the agenda? So moved. Second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Next item would be public comment. Is there any public comment? Hearing none or seeing none. Next item, approval of the operation budget for Espinosa Terrace. Mr. Heron. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. Attaches the Espinosa Terrace apartment budget for FY 2023. This um, property is managed, managed by the Affordable Housing, the Southern Nevada Region Affordable Housing Program. This budget covers 12 months of operating receipts and expenditures. Uh, upon approval, uh, the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority would, ad would ad adopt <coughs> the Espinosa Terrace budget for FY 2023. Um, this, this project is also a, a residential assistant demonstration which was converted in FY 2018. Are there any questions? Seeing none, motion for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion carries. Is there any citizen participation on this item? Hearing none, a motion for adjournment. I'll move to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Um, the next item would be Belzar Apartments. Madam Clerk, take the roll. President Jordan? Here. Secretary Diaz? Here. Treasurer Heron? Present. Director Craig? Present. Director Disman? Here. Director Black? Here. Director McCurdy? Present. Director Segerblum? Director Shaw and Director Turner. Here. A quorum is present and we are in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law. Is there approval for to accept the agenda? It's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposition? Motion carries. Is there any public comment on this item? Next item, the approval of the operating budget. Mr. Heron. Um, <clears throat> Mr. President, there is one uh, correction on this item. Instead of the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2023, it should be September 30th, 30th of 2023. Uh, attached for your approval is the Bennett Plaza apartment budget for FY 2023, which is managed by the Affordable Housing Program of Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. Uh, this budget consists of 12 um, operating receipts and expenditure for due to the period of September 30th, 2023. Uh, upon approval, um, 
the Southern Valley Regional Housing Authority would adopt the Benning Plaza apartment budget for the fiscal year. Uh, this project is also a red a rental assistance demonstration project, which was converted in, in 2019. Any questions? So, Mr. Hearn, I'm just noticing as I skim through that there is a red line item, and I just wanted clarity as to what the red light item was on the second page of the summary <coughs> on the very bottom. It's that red line item is is showing that there would be a budget deficit projected at the end of the, end of the fiscal year um, if, if all the items are uh, spending as, as presented to the board. And so if if there's a deficit, then how do we go about covering or ensuring that it's we not a continued <coughs> deficit? It would, it would be used out of reserve funds. Okay. <coughs> so we take reserve funds to make us whole? Yes. But is there anything that we need to be cognizant of moving forward where we need to be aware of making sure that we're shoring up versus being in this deficit? One, one of the er two of the areas that, that I, I would make note of would be the salaries for the tenant service program. Generally those sal salaries is, is, is part of the budget, but it's not paid by the project. It's money that's come from the developer fees. So that, that $19,900 would actually be supplemented by one of our, our non-federal program as we do in all our rental de demonstration programs. I also noticed that in our management fees, we are charging about $59,000. We projected budget for about $59,000, which represents about 11% of, um, of, our, of our, our total operating income. Generally, we charge around 4 to 5% um, for that fee. So I will be talking with uh, um, Director uh, Lewis, Mr. Richard Jordan and our finance, our finance team to see how we can kind of, kind of adjust that so we can come within budget. Thank you. I don't know if any of my colleagues have any other questions. I have a question. So when will we know that's been rectified and taken care of? I'm sorry? When will we know when you speak with Mr. Jordan that it's been taken care of and rectified? I could bring it back, if, you, if the board would like, I could bring it back to the next meeting and let you know that, um, um, that you know, what, what his, his, his decision okay. is. Thank you very much. Thank you. So moved. Been moved and properly second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Motion carries. Uh, citizen participation on this item? Seeing none, is there a motion to adjourn? Second. It's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Meetings adjourned. The next item would be the next item would be Archie Grant. Madam Chair takes or Madam Clerk take the roll. President Jordan. Present. Secretary Diaz. Here. Treasurer Heron. Present. Director Craig. Present. Director Disman. Here. Director Black. Here. Director McCurdy. Present. Director Siegerblum. Here. Director Shaw. And Director Turner. Here. A quorum is present and we are in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? Move to approve the agenda. Second. Been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any op opposition? Hearing none, we're going with the agenda. Public comment on this area? Seeing none, approval of the operating budget for Archie Grant. Mr. Heron? Uh, attached for your approval is the Archie Grant apartment budget for FY 2023. Uh, this property is managed by the Affordable Housing Program of Southern, Region, Southern Valley Regional Housing Authority. It covers 12 months of operating expenditures, receipts and expenditures through the fiscal year, December 31st, 2023. Upon approval, the Southern Nevada, Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority would adopt the Archie Grant Park apartment budget for the fiscal year. Uh, this project is also a rental assistance demonstration, which, which was converted in uh, 2019. Uh, uh, staff is asking for your approval on this item. Any questions? Second. It's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposition? Hearing none, the motion carries. Citizen participation on this item? Is there a motion for adjournment? It's been, most, it's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Aye. Thank you. Next item on the agenda would be the birth of Johnson Estates. The roll, please. President Jordan? Here. Secretary Diaz? Here. Treasurer Heron? Present. Director Craig? Director Disman, Director Black, Here. Director McCurdy, Here. Director
Director Siegerblum? Director Shaw? Director Turner? Yes. A quorum is present and we are in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? Move to approve the agenda. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Any opposition? Hearing none, the agenda is approved. Any co public comment on this item? <coughs> Hearing none, approval of operating budget for Liberty Johnson, Mr. Heron. Um, I also, have, Mr. President, have a, uh, a correction in this budget as well. This budget is uh, September 30th, 2023. Very good. Um, we'll attached that. for your review and approval is Liberty Johnson, the state budget for FY23. Uh, this budget is also managed by the Affordable Housing Program. Um, which is owned by the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. This budget covered 12 months of operating receipts and expenditures uh, for fiscal year 2023. Upon approval, uh, we would adopt the Liberta Johnson State budget. Uh, this budget is a RAD rental assistance demonstration project, which was converted in, also in 2019. Uh, there are there any questions? Seeing, hearing none, uh, move for approval. I'll second the motion. Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Item carries. Citizen participation? Seeing none, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? Second. It's been motioned and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Aye. Meetings adjourned. The next item would be Wardell Street Townhomes. President Madam Jordan? Present. Secretary Diaz? Here. Treasurer Heron? Present. Director Craig? Director Disman, Here. Director Black, Present. Director McCurdy, Present. Director Siegerblum, Here. Director Shaw, and Director Turner. Here. A quorum is present and we are in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? Move to approve. It's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Aye. Hearing none, the agenda is approved. Public comment? Hearing none. Um, approval of operating budget for Adel Street <coughs> Townhomes, Mr. Heron. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Attached for your uh, for your approval is the Wardell Street Townhouse Townhomes um, budget for FY 2023. Uh, this property is managed by the Affordable Housing Program, <coughs> excuse me, of Southern Nevada, which covers 12 months of operating receipts and expenditure for fiscal year December 31st, 2023. Uh, staff is asking the board to approve this budget as presented. Is, uh, this was a, a mixed finance project which was converted in 2020 of this year, of last year, a couple of years ago. Any, any questions? Questions? <coughs> Hearing and seeing none, uh, moving for approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Aye. Motion carries. Citizen participation. Is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. It's been moved. Moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposition? Meeting adjourned. The next item would be Vera Johnson A. Family Development. President Lewis Jordan. Here. Secretary Diaz. Here. Treasurer Heron. Present. Director Craig. Present. Director Disman. Here. Director Black. Here. Director McCurdy. Present. Director Siegerblum. Director Shaw. And Director Turner. Yes. A quorum is present and we are in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Is there a uh, motion to approve the agenda? Second. It's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposition? Agenda approved. Is there any public comment on this area? Hearing and seeing none. Approval of the operating budget for Vera Johnson A. Mr. Heron. Good afternoon. Uh, board members. Um, I wanted to, in your package, I think in your package you were mixing the second page, but there, it, there, it was emailed out, um, I think yesterday, Jessica, to everybody. So if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, but attached for your approval is the Vera Johnson A apartment budget for FY 2023. This budget is managed by Park Place Management Company. It covers 12 months of operating receipts and expenditure uh, for, for the fiscal year December 31st, 2023. And Staff is asking the board to approve this budget as presented on uh, the covered operating budget for Vera Johnson A. This is a mixed finance project which, which was converted in 2018. Are there any questions? Aye. 
Any opposition? Hearing none, item carries. Citizen participation? Hearing and seeing none. A um, motion for adjournment? Second. It's been motioned and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Meeting adjourned, and that concludes the uh, special meeting portion of our affiliate companies. Thank you. Thank you, President Jordan. I will now start this regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners of the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority on this Thursday, December 15th, 2022. Madam Secretary, if you could please call the roll. Chairperson Olivia Diaz. Here. Vice Chairperson William McCurdy. Present. Commissioner Scott Black. Here. Commissioner Valerie Craig. Present. Commissioner Michael Disman. Here. Commissioner Tick Siegerblum. Here. Commissioner Dan Shaw. And Commissioner Lushana Turner. Present. A quorum is present and we are in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Since we already did the Pledge of Allegiance, we're going to go into public comment. Public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters on this agenda uh, for the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority Board for discussion and possible action. If you wish to be heard, come to the speaker's podium, clearly state your name and address and spell your last name for the record. And uh, we welcome those who are here to speak on any agendized items. Welcome, Ms. Turner. Turner, you know, I ain't been here in a while, but I'm back. And guess what? I see Ms. Carpenter is not here today, but I'm taking Ms. Carpenter to Washington with me in, in about two months. As soon as I go through all my tests and stuff, and I tell y'all what. When we leave Washington, D.C., we're going to shake, rattle, and roll this housing authority. And you, you're going to have some problems. And I want to say to you, Ms. Diaz, oh, Commissioner Person Diaz, um, I'll see you next month at the city council meeting. And you know the Wicked Witch ain't going to be too happy to see me show up. Thank you, Ms. Turner. Any other public comment? You can come up, ma'am. You can come up, ma'am. Yeah, just state your name for the record. And just uh, if you can reference the agenda item you're here to speak on. Uh, yes, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Marlene Coopson, and I'm a resident of Robert Gordon Plaza. And I was looking over the agenda item about the offset of the monies that have been uncollectible. I just wanted to know what the uncollectibles were, that's all. And then hopefully when we get to that agenda item, we'll be able okay. to answer that question. Okay. All right. We're not there yet, but okay. we're just taking your input before we start on okay. our agenda. All right, thank you, that's all thank I have. Thank you had. very much. Thank you, you're welcome. Any other public comment? on the agendized item. We'll have a second public comment to speak about anything else, but these are strictly on what we're gonna talk about at this meeting, so. Seeing no further public comment, I am going to close public comment, the first public comment period, and uh, we're going to go to agenda item three. We have two regular meeting minutes to approve. So the first one I'm looking for a, a motion to approve is the regular meeting minutes on October 20th, 2022. Are there any edits, comments? or a motion to approve the October 20th, 2022 meeting minutes. I have a first by Commissioner Craig. Second. Second from Vice Chair McCurdy. All those in favor, please signify by stating aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Well, I'll entertain another motion to approve the regular meeting minutes on November 17th, 2022, unless there's discussion by the board on them. Move for approval. I have a first from Commissioner Disman and a second from Commissioner Black, all those in favor, please signify by stating aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously as well. We'll move to um, approval of the agenda with inclusion of any emergency items and deletion of any items for discussion and possible action. I know, Mr. Jordan, we may have an amendment to one of the agenda items. Yes, Madam Chair, I would ask that we move the executive director's report up in the agenda. It'll just show the continuity uh, regarding the presentations that will be made afterwards. Okay, so let, just to be clear, I'm trying to find. So we want so to move we're moving the agenda item 13 under section to, five. After, after number six, after under number section three, 
After number uh, six. Okay. Yes. All right. So 13 will become the new seven. Yes. And then is there an amendment to one of the agenda items? I know that we were um, discussing. Yes. The there is, a, there is an amendment to item uh, number seven. Mm -hmm. And um, there's new wording that will be put in there regarding uh, review of e or so Maho Ms. Yeah, yeah, Mahogany, uh, would you have the language course. of yes. what we want to state for the record? Or if Ms. Fleming has that yeah. language, do you remember what the language needs to be, Ms. Fleming? Can you come to the microphone and state it for us? Good afternoon, commissioners. The only thing, the amendment is on the action requested uh, to include revisions dated September 20, 2012, and that is it. We do not uh, add the, uh, the remainder of the sentence. I think there is uh, an additional amendment we discussed that yeah. says that when emergency, I, when the executive director is given the approval to change items in emergency situations, there will be some kind of conferring with the board chair or vice chair. Okay, and That's we can the also, language. and we can state that when we get yes. back to that item, but I just want to make sure that for the agenda as posted, we make that correction. So we're striking all the language after the date, September 20th, 2022, 2012, sorry. That is correct okay. now. And we're right. adding that other piece. Correct. Yes, thank all you. Right. So there is amendment language to this agenda. Are there any questions or discussion from the board? If not, I'm willing to entertain a motion to approve the amended agenda. Ms. I, Commissioner I, Craig, do you have a question? I'm I confused. Okay. I, I was trying to figure out what are you all saying because something about after on page. Uh, on page three of seven? Uh, three of seven. Yes. We have 20, 20, so we're striking the language that after, comes after that date. 20, so you're striking all this. Yes. So we're deleting that. Okay. And then we're adding the language um, that the Mr. Jordan provision. about the emergency provision of when the executive director can change. Uh, because there's a need to change immediately. Would be conferred. You would confer with the chair and vice chair in order to do that. That language will be added to this. <laughs> All right. So he has to get basically check in with the leadership of the board before okay. moving in any direction. Okay. I feel a little better. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any Madam, other questions? Yes. Madam Chair, one other thing. Um, turn on. Earlier, Can you I, turn on your mic? Because I know Ms. Turner can't hear us if our mics aren't on. The public comment that came before us was actually in regards to the consent agenda. So the question is that, can we have that addressed before we approve the consent agenda? Was that the? Well, pull, pull, pull from up being a consent, part of the consent agenda so we can address it the red light. And I'll defer to legal counsel. <laughs> so. If you're gonna have discussion on the item, you need to remove it from the consent agenda. Okay. So I'll approve the agenda, uh, approve the consent agenda um, with the item that needs to be discussed, pulled to speak about and be approved separately. Go ahead, no. I think there's only one item on the consent agenda. So yeah, so pull that. I just wanna be clear, are we pulling it off the consent agenda so then we could address the, the question raised? Okay, all right. So, but sure. Ms. Mahogany, we can approve the amended agenda as proposed and then take another motion to pull, bring forth the, or does it have to be in the same motion? I just want to make sure we don't move one thing and forget to move another. Yeah, so so um, legal counsel, you're making all the changes to the agenda now so you can approve it? Okay. So one of the changes will be that you're pulling the item um, and- after we, ad uh, well, after we adopt the amendments, then we can make that motion. Correct. Okay, so take one at a time. So I have a motion by Vice Chair McCurdy to move this agenda as amended, and do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Commissioner Black. All those in favor, please signify aye, unless there's questions. I got a question, Go ahead. Forgive me for Commissioner Craig. Confused. Yes. Forgive me. Yes. I understand numbers. I know how to go from. Oh, I'm sorry. I know how to go from one number to the other. Just one, because I really yes. confused. My eyes are crossing. So I understand September 20, 2012, that it, under that, all that's to be isolated. Correct? All, the, all of the language after it will be stricken. All right, then what I do is I go to the top on page three of seven mm -hmm. and action requested. Staff down to collection agency. So that is gonna be in that place? No. no. 
So, so that's just a separate amendment to that agenda item, but then also our uh, director has requested that we move up agenda item 13 to, seven. to follow seven. six, yes. Six. And it becomes seven. the new seven, yes. All right. <laughs> so it was originally. I like 7A and 7B, I understand. Okay, that. all right, Pretty it's good. 7A, and then we'll deal with 7B. Thank you. If Very that good. makes the record clear for you. It's very clear. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. We made everything clear as mug, didn't we? It was mahogany. All right. So I'm going to move on that uh, motion that's on the table. All those in favor, please signify by stating aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Now we'll go ahead and I'll entertain a motion to move the consent agenda item off for discussion. So moved. Okay, so I have a uh, first to move it off from consent agenda item so we can discuss. Do I have a second? Second from Vice Chair McCurdy. All those in favor, please signify by stating aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, so we're moving on to discuss agenda item number five. Um, which is approval of request to write off outstanding tenant accounts receivable and vacated accounts for the period ending October 31st, 2022. Mr. Heron. Okay, I see now. Good evening, board members. Um, Fred Heron, Director of the Chief Administrative Office of Southern of the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. Uh, today, this item is T on uh, write offs for. A tenant, vacant tenant accounts receivable. Let me get to the right page. We're asking the board to approve the write offs um, in the amount of $28,151, about 2.6% of our rental income, which we deem to be uncollectible. Um, a portion of that is the our public housing program, which represents about $23,771 and affordable housing program, which represent about $4,300 um, for the affordable housing program. And we're asking the board to approve these right off so we can submit them to the uh, collection company. Are there any questions? We had one question. I don't know if you want to repeat the question. I think the question was whether, what does this, or the, the amount for the Robert Gordon um, project represent? It represented uh, the tenant that vacated, they didn't pay rent, they had a return check and some damage fees just to be in access to the, uh, uh, the tenant. Are, there, other Are questions? there any further questions from the board or? No further questions. Okay. If there are no further questions, move approval. Okay. I have a first from Vice Chair McCurdy and a second from Commissioner Craig. All those in favor, please signify by stating aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. We'll move on to agenda item six. Acknowledgement of our departed by our director, Mr. Lewis Jordan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Since uh, our last gathering, uh, we've lost uh, Alice Barber, Pierce Clifton, Cecil Collette, Bridget Dupree, Lee Holland, Latora Marsh, Robert McLaren, Susan McNulty, Linda Reich, Irby Smith, Terrence Waller, Bernard Whitmore, and Pamela Wilson, and also wanted us to keep in our prayers. Uh, Commissioner Shaw lost his mother, and just wanted to uh, ask for a moment of silence for all of the departed. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to the new agenda item number seven, receive a report from the executive director on administrative and operational activities of the agency. So back to you, Mr. Jordan. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I'd like to say again, happy holidays to all. I um, wanted to remind the board that it was actually one day today that you approved my uh, joining the organization. Um, I'll have a, a full report on on the accomplishments of this year at the end of this year. So we'll do that in the, uh, in the January meeting. But I wanted to defer my time today to Craig Patterson and um, from uh, Patterson Associates, who will just walk through a presentation on technology. And once Mr. Patterson has concluded, we're going to also move up our partner reports. 
and I'll have uh, uh, Lee Quick come up and introduce our partners. But at this moment, I'd like to turn it over to Pat Craig Patterson. Welcome, Mr. Patterson. Thank you, Commissioners. On behalf of Patterson and Associates, uh, we appreciate being here in front of the Commission, and we're excited to present some of the things that we've been doing over the past several months on behalf of the Housing Authority. I'll get right into the information. Um, our approach to how we help with IT, our IT strategy is based on helping the Housing Authority address system and data security and disaster resilience, whether it be um, weather related, disease related or whatever, system reliability, and I don't like to read slides to people, people can read faster than I can, but we address all of these items in our operations management strategy with the IT department. What I did want to cover, though, is we have an approach with each department that is stimulated with innovation. It's something that I learned in working with Apple and other companies, and that is we have to know why we're doing what we're doing. And the main why is to help the housing authority to be able to assist residents with less resources but accomplish more and to bridge that digital divide and to do so with a, in a secure manner and in a way that also facilitates staff functional performance and enjoyment of work. The more enjoyment that uh, staff has in their work, the better customer service we give them, the better customer service then that they can give to our participants and the community. So the way we do that is with the four-step process. We look to see in every department what we can eliminate, items we can reduce. You can't always eliminate everything. And then also we look to see, my next slide here, what we can raise improve the employee work enjoyment by reducing work frustration. One of the things we told staff, and we'll be able to show the commission that later, not today necessarily, but a 10 to 1 keystroke reduction in terms of data entry, which is pretty significant, and we can actually do better than that, but we like to be conservative. And then also, um, the Housing Authority's agility and ability to serve more people with less. In other words, they'll be able to reconfigure what they do without some of the physical constraints normally associated with IT. Um, a reliable, secure cloud infrastructure. You'll see why in a minute I'm going to go over some of the threats that have been uh, faced by public entities. Also, higher performance in document management and workflow. Sorry, the button is working this. I'm too click on the trigger. What this is is a chart of disasters nationwide uh, between 1980 and 2021. And we can see it's escalating, continuing to climb. I don't need to go in. This isn't designed to be dismal. Um, we know about the drought in this area. But when you look at flood, tornado, and other issues, COVID, office accessibility, things of that nature, one of the things that we want to point out is, is that documents and data are important. And without securing those documents and data, it can make government offices targets for a number of things. And that's called disaster amplification. Because not only, for example, in a flood or a fire, do people become homeless. But if the public agency and the employees are also impacted and can't get to work, can't get to the documents, now landlords can't get paid. It's called disaster amplification. So we're designing the systems at the Housing Authority to present, prevent that. You can imagine with paper what happens in a flood or a tornado or any other type of disaster or if people just can't get to the work. So as we go through, we're looking at paperless workflows, and these are all things that we're excited to say that um, we're going to be presenting. Um, the government has wanted us, with all of our agencies where possible, to future-proof remote work for agencies so that our staff can work from anywhere, just about with mobile devices, which also means we can reach our residents where they need the assistance at. So it's a two-pronged approach. When there's a disaster, employees suffer the disaster too. And so they need to be able to still get to work. We need to know that they're okay and that they're stabilized so that they can help then with the community. And also, how do we manage that? How do we monitor that? So these are all things that we've, we've looked at and are taking a look at now. And this is a pre-COVID picture of affordable housing and a wait list. You can imagine what it was during COVID with masks and social distancing, things of that nature. The bottom line is we want to outline that we have to find a way to serve more people with less with proper distancing. We want to be socially distant at times, but we want to be supportively close. And that's what the community needs with all the things that are going on. The benefits are very clear. 
that we can uh, improve employee productivity by as much as 52%. Some people working remote can work more effectively and efficiently um, without commute times, childcare issues, and that affects our participants too. They face those very same challenges trying to get work. Operational efficiency overall, 40%, customer experience improving at by 46%. These are targets that we want to seek to achieve with what we're bringing forward. So what we've been specifically doing is we've inventoried all of the housing authorities' um, IT infrastructure. Every printer, anything that connects to the network, we've assessed all that and we've Im implemented a system where every two minutes it's updated. So if anything's plugged into the network, we know about it and IT can manage it. It also lets us know when the licenses are going to expire, when warranties are going to expire on every single device by the chipset inside the device. Um, we've identified the active number of servers. We had at one time 100 servers. We're down to 50 servers. Ultimately, you'll probably only need 10 in the cloud. So that's going to be a significant increase. And how do we do that? The cloud servers will be able to expand and contract dynamically based on load. And at night, when we're not using it that much, they'll be very minimal. So we can see how the cloud allows us to eliminate the physical constraints that we're currently um, inhibited by. We've been looking at um, internet speed enhancements with the governor's office, both for residents and for our offices. And call center, we have identified some solutions with Ring Central and other providers. And this has all been done in the, in the past 90 days. Also, core services, in addition to trying to enhance the existing document management solutions you have on premise, we're also going to be looking to deploy with your approval a document management system for the agency wide. In other words, between departments, new employees, those who are looking to be hired with residents, all of them will be able to access the document management system, which means residents, participants will not have to travel to the office in order to give us documents and we won't be losing any documents. Um, we'll be looking at the paper-based workflows. We've already done so, and we believe, as I said before, that we can do a 10 to 1 keystroke reduction. We also believe that we can do a 20% improvement on paperless reduction, which means less paper in the office. And I just want you to imagine a piece of paper on a copy machine that someone's coughed on with a blower and a heat lamp. We're looking to reduce those types of exposures for our staff. And what we've seen is a 10% improvement on employee leave time when we're able to implement paperless systems along with operational dashboards. Now, I'm going to show you some examples in a minute. But we've also looked at the website to consider how it can help engage the community better so that when you go to the website, it's not just a billboard or a poster, but actually artificial intelligence starts asking you, how can I help you? How can I get to you so that we can assist people in a much faster rate. Um, and then how can we help our um, finance department get invoices faster and easier with less data entry and engage those who are helping the Housing Authority deliver services a lot faster. Um, and also reaching the homeless. Most of the homeless have a mobile device and so we need to be able to reach them. This is an active screenshot of one of the things that we did. We monitored for over 90 days the active websites that everyone at the Housing Authority has been accessing and what tools they use to look at bandwidth, number of hours, what's being utilized. Um, and this is just a summary. There's over 100 different ones. I didn't go into the detail. But these are the assessment tools that we've given the Housing Authority so they can see how the tools we're deploying impact the operations. These are the top applications that are being used at the Housing Authority. Outlook is being used as a document management solution. People email PDFs back and forth and it becomes a pseudo document management system. So we're looking at the hours, minutes and seconds each and every day that that's taking place so that we can see what the impact of the solutions is going to be. And we have some really nice projections on that. This is an example of one of the dashboards that's going to be deployed in January 2023. Um, um, where we'll be able to look at unit vacancies, we'll be able to look at work orders, we'll be able to look at things where we have a system that pulls data from the system every hour for maintenance emergencies and at least once a day on some of the financials. We can do it more, but staff will be able to look quickly and see where they're at and how things are, are moving along. And when you click on elements, it can drill down so that we can see specifically even into employee performance 
and operations and ways that we can make improvements. Just like when you look at your car, a dashboard, you know whether you're on empty or full, you don't have to make a calculation, you don't have to thumb through pages. This is an example of what we have in the um, IT department. And so we have both the north and south campuses. And what this is doing, it may play, but um, it allows us, and can you scroll on that, Tommy, to fast forward it a bit? Yeah. It allows us to drill into the network and click on any item and see what its activity status is, what's faults, whether it's being attacked, and also what preventive measures, when it needs to be replaced. You have more than 3,000 devices on your network. Um, this is another example of a dashboard that shows a housing choice voucher. We'll be able to examine where people are. If you could fast forward a little bit. Yeah. Thank you, Tommy. You'll be able to drill in and see by zip code where our participants are located and how that affects uh, statistics here in the local area. So this is live now. Um, but we haven't deployed it out to the staff yet so that we can see when we hover over any uh, pinpoint where items are at. So we just wanted to give a really quick overview of what we're doing, why we're doing it, and open ourselves up for questions as we get into the commission. Commissioner Thank Craig. You. Very informational. I know that my colleagues have questions, so we'll start with Commissioner Craig. Hi. I just want to smile because <laughs> I'm happy. I'm glad to see that. I have a question. Um, now, you made a statement that, here's my concern, that I guess the connectivity to residents, like I live in Jamestown Tower and we have an outdated a computer, outdated word, word maybe five, whatever is outdated. So in other words, if that's your goal to do that, would our systems be updated? As a matter of fact, ultimately, I know that Mr. Jordan is looking at that with the governor's office. We've also um, been talking with the IT department and with Cox and other cable providers on what can be provided in terms of high-speed internet access to every residential property for the housing authority. Um, it's, it's just part of IT strategy. So my answer to you is yes, exactly how that will take place just now and which carrier will be, I don't know. Um, did you want to speak to any of that? Or well, I, I just wanted to give an overall perspective. Uh, Mr. Patterson was brought in to help us with an assessment. Oh, assessment on our, only. A, a assessment and implementation at some point of our overall IT process. Uh, he came in to really give us an understanding of where we are, what we need to do to move forward, including select a new IT manager. So there, there's a lot of different things we're looking at as indicated in this presentation, first is foremost, first and foremost, our connection to the residents. So yes, that is a part of the overall strategy. Okay, like I said before, we have old word. We may have internet, but the word is old. And then the thing about it is many of the residents complain about replication of paperwork. And so how will I know you're not God, you don't know everything, because if you did, I'd be a billion dollar, millionaire. <laughs> but because I know you don't know everything, my question is, we often have problems because there's some lack of communication, and we get penalized. You know, we may have to, there might have been a, some problem with Rent Cafe, yeah. and it's not our problem, but the point about it is because they're having a technical problem with Rent Cafe, residents are having to go to court or they're getting eviction notices because there's a problem with the communication network. And what I'm saying is, so are, are you all going to work with the individuals who are working in the office first in order to get the communication effective yes. so that we as residents won't have to keep on going back and forth doing the same thing over and over and over again? Yes. because there's a lack of communication. Yeah, one of the things that I, I, can, I can tell you for sure that we, we do, because I do this at housing authorities and have been a director at housing authorities for each of the programs, including IT and executive director, is when the residents submit something, they need a confirmation that they submitted it. And that needs to come back automatically. The systems that we're going to be putting in place will automatically inform every vendor who submits an invoice that the invoice was received and we have options on where we let them know it's in the process and the same thing with our residents. They'll get a time, date stamped email back or text message. The other thing that Mr. Jordan has asked us to look at is our customer service where every person who calls in a work order will get an automatic call for customer service and give a rating on the, on the employee service that they receive. So these are all elements. So 
Everything's not today. We have to put in the infrastructure, the central nervous system, so that we can do it. But the goal, the objective is not technology. The objective is helping people to be served better. And I don't have any problem saying those two things that I just said because that's what's important for us. Okay, now the other thing you said, uh, here we go, talking about work order. Yes, ma'am. And so I know you're not guys, you can't do everything, but when can we anticipate uh, that would be done? Say everything's a go, like maybe a year or two, because residents are frustrated. I kid you not. They're frustrated. They are frustrated. So I know you don't know everything. Can maybe Less than a year. Oh, that sounds good to me. Whoa. <laughs> sounds very, that's what I like to hear. I'll tell them that. And my other question is, so that means they may be because we have word that's like maybe, I say word seven. And so if you can get it done within a year, who's going to be the one that will implement, because you have certain rooms where our computers are, they will implement that we will have a word seven, whereas we can, you know, submit that data to you. And that, well, the other thing is, but the people's in the office, we have a wonderful person, Brandy's a dream. But will the other people in the office have the patience and time to come and show us the senior citizens? Because we're not as brilliant as a lot of you all are. We think a little slower. That will teach us how to do that, to how to submit it, and not be afraid of the computer. There will be a robust communication strategy that will develop and roll out to the board. Um, you, you have a bonus in James Down Tower that we're doing redevelopment there. So all of this will, will handsomely coincide with that work so when you get your new computer system at James Down we'll make sure that the appropriate software is there and the training needed will also take place yes ma'am and here's the thing my only thing is they need to be culturally sensitive they say a lot of things but the essence is culturally sensitive yes because a person's 13 to 14 years old they get it but when they get to be my age I'm 16 when they get to be my age it takes a while for us to get things and we don't need them huffing because that's insulting. No. And then individuals, I'm saying they get intimidated. Yeah. And they get intimidated that they won't do it. And then they're afraid. And then I have to come and just be the big bad wolf. And, and, and I, and I, I want to add to what we're saying, too, is that uh, the commission should prepare itself for a series of improvements and enhancements and contract requests, everything from the infrastructure, cloud-based servers, and things of that nature. This is step one, what we're doing now. But there's, there's going to be at least five steps, and what we'll do is put together, and we're going to deliver to Mr. Jordan for your review, is a roadmap so that you know which milestones we're at along that journey so that you can track the progress. And believe it or not, I had, written, I had marked a thing about the milestones. Would you be presenting them? You answered my question. Thank you so much. <laughs> Any other questions from the commissioners? I'm just going to comment that uh, I'm happy we finally got our tech report. Yes. <laughs> it's been a long time that the request has been in the queue from the board to kind of give us an idea because we know that we are deficient in this area and in order to meet the needs of our customers we need to be and to help our employees with their workflow yes. and their workload um, efficiencies and technology is key yep. uh, we know that safety and security of that data is super important we don't want our data hijacked and then ransomed to us mm -hmm. so I've been asking about how where are we with cybersecurity and those efforts so super helpful that you yourself is kind of anal analyzing this for us but then I know it's going to come at a cost yep. so um, the more we can keep um, our level of education about the cost because in the city of Vegas we spend a lot of money in IT because we want to make sure we're at the top of the line mm -hmm. and we don't want our ability to serve our residents to be compromised and the same goes here we don't want the ability for us to do the work day in and day out to be compromised nor their information so we know it comes with a cost so we just need to brace ourselves for making sure that we're authorizing but we want to make sure also because in the we have to learn from our past mistakes and embracing products that then will be outdated or are no good in our workplace so we know that you'll be a good steward of our dollars absolutely and and i can tell you the difference between price and cost and the value of what it is to the residents that you're going to have a return on investment and we're going to be running those numbers so that you can see what that is as a matter of fact we know right now that for every two minutes we can save, and we know we can save more than that, but I like to be conservative. For every two minutes on 150 employees that we can save, it gets you another, the equivalent of 10 more employees with the systems we're looking at. Music to, I think, everyone's ears. So, Thank you, Mr. Patterson. Thank you so much. Thank you. you know, I want to, Vice Chair, did you have a question? 
No, the only thing I was going to say, uh, and, and thank you for the presentation. I think that, you know, once we receive your, your complete report, we'll have essentially, as you stated, a roadmap as to where we're going. Uh, one thing that I would like for you to include in that report, if you haven't already had this consideration, is that um, in addition to providing us with, you know, the cost estimates and so forth, could you also include, um, since we have you, uh, some of the grants some of the federal grants that may be out there, whether it be uh, through, you know, not only HUD, but some of the, the other uh, departments that we have that we may be able to solicit and put in applications for uh, for these specific purposes, uh, whether it be Homeland Security or, or whoever we look at, I think that it would be helpful to the board to have, you know, a thorough um, and, and really pinpointed, uh, I guess, idea of where we can get those dollars from in addition to what we're gonna personally invest. You know, I was going to speak to that. That's more in line with the strategic plan that we're putting together and the, uh, the work that the Bronner Group is doing with us to help us identify those additional resources. But yes, we will make that available. And I also wanted to, to uh, say thank you, Mr. Batterson, and comment on Madam Chair's point. Uh, you know, this was a long time coming because it took us a while to really figure out where we were in the process. And as, uh, as mentioned, uh, it, it, it will cost us a few dollars. I spoke to Mr. Patterson about doing a cost-benefit analysis, and I, I just wanted to forewarn the board that it's more than just we're paying X amount of dollars. Uh, some of the things that he's talked about that, um, that we have and don't have has caused us uh, significant staffing issues. It's caused us issues around our inability to, um, to work remotely. Uh, we're, we're one of the last agencies standing that does not have a remote work policy. And you know, other, other federal and government agencies will advertise, you can come and work for us, maybe show up at the office once a week. And so um, while we're promoting customer service and things of that nature, we also have to be just as diligent with resident, or I'm sorry, with uh, employee, employee relations. So yes, we'll, we'll come back with a very robust um, uh, timeline. But uh, Madam Chair, I just wanted to know, it wasn't I noted that you asked for this, you know, some times ago. And I think that today we, uh, at least as the executive director, I'm much more clear on what we have and don't have than I would have been had we put something together a few months ago. So thank you. Thank you. Thank Merry you Christmas for your patience. to me, huh? Yes, thank you for your patience. <laughs> and also I just want to note that we also need to, as we're advancing technology in our spaces, not forget, you know, about the disconnect that sometimes by taking technology to the next level, not all of our folks are necessarily there. And so how are we going to bridge that gap and make sure that all of our users, whether they're residents, whether they're workers, make sure that we're shoring up their skills so they're best suited and prepared to deal with the transitions. Because sometimes we implement things, but we're not teaching people how to use it. So that's a whole other area that I know you guys will execute in your planning. And, and I would steps. put that clearly in the bucket that Commissioner Craig spoke of, of cultural sensitivity, absolutely. Because it, it means nothing to have it if no one under, if everyone doesn't clearly understand how how to use it, and uh, we know how technology can scare people sometimes, but at the same time, we also know the the breadth of of um, of calm that it brings when presented in a manner that's uh, reflective of everyone who's going to use it. So no, duly noted. I have one more question, and the other thing is may sound funny, but I'm sure some people are thinking, will I lose my job when this technology come, comes in because it's more effective? What's going to happen to the individuals who are working here? Because as I know, computers have made some people lose their jobs. Well, it's been my experience, and it's other working at other housing authorities. And first of all, let me, let me start off. Technology-wise, we are very, very, very far behind. So let, let me start there. And, and when I say that, I want to also say, as we're behind, and, and, and as we're, we're talking with staff about these changes, uh, I have a common question I'll ask. 
Can anyone name me things that you wish you could be doing if you could do your regular work faster and smarter? And unequivocally, hands will go up. So I, I think that, w in fact, not I think, I know we may be see, we may see a shift in the organization. We may be a shift, see a shift in job duties. But I can assure you there are things that we should be doing in the way of touching customers and in that nature that we just can't do right now that we will be able to do in the future. So to answer your, your question, um, there, there's, there's no strategy or no um, thought of losing jobs. That's, there's a thought of enhancing jobs. People may have to work differently, but this is about getting us to that end of customer service. All right, Mr. Jordan, if you'd like to um, present our very first. So Paula Tucker is going to come up and partner. introduce okay. our community partners. Awesome. Welcome, Ms. Tucker. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Paula Tucker. I'm the acting resident program coordinator for the Housing Authority. And today is my pleasure to introduce two of our long-term agency partners. Uh, first one is from Sunrise Children's Foundation, Ms. Tiffany Austin, and she is the Director of Programs. So I'm gonna let her talk about that. Good Welcome. afternoon. I feel like I need to sing. You guys like karaoke? <laughs> Thank you so much for the invitation. Um, I stand in gratitude to both Paula and to Lee for extending this invitation to us. Sunrise Children's Foundation has been a partner with the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority since 1993, so back when Ms. Craig was born. Um, <laughs> and so I just wanted to remind you all who we are and um, what we do in the community. So Sunrise Children's Foundation does have some WIC programs across the city um, at Nellis Air Force Base and also in Mesquite, Nevada. We also have early childhood education programs that provide two program models. One is a child development center model and another, our second one is our home visiting model. The program that we started with the Housing Authority back in 1995-ish was our home visiting program, HIPPIE, Home Instruction for Parents of Preschool Youngsters. And we did that at Sherman Gardens, Marble Manor, and Ernie Cregan. So that tells you how old, how old I am because I was a resident at Ernie Cregan. Um, we are interested in continuing to grow our partnership with the Housing Authority through some on-site child development centers. And so we are federally funded. We've been federally funded with our early childhood education program since about 2007 through some ARA funding. And um, we're looking for early childhood education space. We do a great job at school readiness, family engagement, um, working with families and doing their goal setting. So we align perfectly with your family self-sufficiency workers in um, working with families who are setting goals and making sure families have the tools they need to be successful in that goal setting. Um, we do have funds right now, like a lot of other agencies across this city, across the state, um, through some um, pandemic dollars and things like that for expansion. And so while we are expanding into both Laughlin and Mesquite, we'd love to expand with the Housing Authority as well. So we are very familiar with the Marble Manor revitalization project and just wanted to put our faces in front of you again to remind you who we are. We've been partners for a really long time and just give you an opportunity to be reintroduced to us. So any questions? Vice Chair McCurdy. Uh, thank you for the presentation and the work that you do. Um, just had a very specific question around uh, when you partner, you say you've been partnering with the Housing Authority since 93, um, and the dollars that you have available to you now. Um, Did you still are you looking? An email from oh. for the, uh, if you can mute your mic online, please. Plan. No. 
Yeah, so uh, what type of partnerships are you looking for in terms of expansion and uh, deploying some of those dollars that you have? Are you looking for? We're looking for space. Okay. So if you have space, we can help build out that space with all of the plumbing things that we need on the inside of a child care center, playground, equipment, um, all of the furnishings on the inside, and we will run the child care centers. Okay, thank you. Please, and thank you. <laughs> well, we know how important this scope of work is because um, as your flyer notes here, 90% of a child's brain development happens before five. Yep. So if we get to our kids earlier and start that inquisitiveness, curiosity, foster uh, the love of reading, vo expand their vocabularies, they're gonna be off to an amazing start and uh, the future's bright for any child. Um, so we definitely need to make sure that possibility is extended to everyone. So we appreciate the scope of work you do every day. Yep. And uh, we have your contact information here and further information about the programming and um, things that you guys do. And also that there's work positions, like everyone you're recruiting, yes, right? We are hiring, hiring, hiring. And so please share that information in your respective areas as well. Um, the gentleman who just spoke before me talked a bit about data. And so I will share with you, I think a lot of times people don't realize that um, these early childhood education programs, two in particular in Clark County, are collecting data on children and their school readiness and families. And so we are one of those agencies that do that. During the pandemic, we maintained our health and nutrition um, percentages for families that stayed up to date with immunizations and, well, baby checks. 80% um, of our babies are ready for kindergarten and we collect this data year round. And so we are open to sharing data with you all on child outcomes okay. and family engagement as well. Okay. Awesome, thank you so much Ms. Right. Alstead for being here. No problem, thank you. Okay, our next presenter, uh, Ms. Jody Mobley, has um, served in many capacities um, over the last several years. Uh, her name is synonymous with providing residents, uh, connecting them to services. Uh, Ms. Jody Mobley is currently the, um, with the Nevada Free Tax Co Coalition, and she is the executive director, so we're happy to have her here today. Welcome, Ms. Mobley. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. I recently assumed the position of executive director with Nevada Federal, or Nevada Federal, Nevada Free Taxes Coalition in October. And I'd like to uh, talk to you about the organization, what we do, who we are. I began with our mission statement. And to put it simply, we help the underserved, low to moderate income uh, individuals and households uh, prepare their taxes um, to prevent um, them having to, um, you know what, this bothers me. I don't need it. Well, we need I hope we don't need it. Oh, it is being recorded. Okay. If you can. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, actually, you have a job to do. I'll hold it. <laughs> thank you. Um, we help people get their taxes done for free. And in doing this, um, we, it, we see our goal is to help them to, to access the credits, the uh, earned income tax credits that they are eligible for, that many people don't know they're eligible for. So we also educate our clients. Um, Speaking of the, uh oh, it's a bit fast, of the earned income tax credit, um, basically, as I said, the main requirement is that you have to earn money. And unfortunately, um, four out of five taxpayers don't realize that they have this eligibility. So our job is to educate them and to let them know that this is something that they can do. Uh, in allowing us to prepare their taxes for them, they can get a bigger return. We're a mission-driven organization, and our business is in pursuit of taxpayers, helping taxpayers. 
That's our purpose. And my role as the ED encompasses finding financial resources to sustain our program, finding the space and the staffing resources required to run the program, and determining what supporting programs are green lit. Uh, we help moderate to low or low to moderate income taxpayers, single filers, students, seniors, veterans, uh, practically every sector of the population we can assist to help them with their taxes. We do this in alliance with VITA. VITA is the volunteer uh, income tax assistance program that is sponsored by the IRS. Um, VITA helps strengthen our community and provides thousands of underserved households with peace of mind and we do this in several ways. The program does it in several ways. First of all, it saves on tax prep fees. Uh, it assists individuals and households claim eligible tax credits. It facilitates completion of tax returns accurately. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm very familiar with driving down the street during tax time and seeing these storefronts that come, that happen to come up right at tax time where they take the monies of those who can least afford it. Um, and with VITA, they don't have to do that. So we facilitate the completion of tax returns accurately. And we also, at NFTC, through the VITAL program, connect the taxpayer to other services. And those are other services um, include uh, first-time homebuyer programs, financial literacy programs, and other education and resources to help the taxpayer. Now, the volunteer experience at NFTC via VITA uh, takes many forms. The volunteer's experience is what they choose it to be. It's not just about being a tax preparer. Uh, it's also, uh, we also have uh, volunteers that act as site coordinators. They basically manage the uh, space that we utilize the um, um, tax preparation services at. We have quality reviewers that review after a tax is, uh, return is prepared. We have a second individual, um, and all of these individuals, individuals are certified by IRS. We have a second individual that looks over the tax return to ensure that it will be accepted by IRS. Uh, we also have a need, and we are in very much need of volunteers to help us to uh, be greeters, to help us administratively, uh, to help us with training, as well as act as uh, instructors. And as I mentioned before, um, our partnerships provide us with access to first-time homebuyer programs, financial literacy, workforce development programs, um, referring, referring our taxpayers to other services uh, is our responsibility, is what we do, in addition to helping them prepare their taxes. So our partners help us through uh, a number of ways. Um, our goal immediately, immediate goal is for us to build our capacity. Um, we need volunteers. Um, we need funding to increase our capacity, to increase our staffing, to assist us in, with our staffing needs. Um, our partners are there to support us, but especially to support what is needed to operate the tax preparation site successfully. And this assistance, this partnership, uh, includes uh, in-kind donations as well as grants. The pillar, as I said, that we're focusing on currently is um, building our capacity in volunteer recruitment and in diversified funding. So the following slides show the statistics of our pre-pandemic, or actually this is, yes, this is pre-pandemic, during the pandemic, I'm sorry, 
Um, we e-filed about 7,000 returns. Um, these were tax returns that were accepted by IRS. We were able to secure over $10 million uh, in refunds for the taxpayers that came to us for assistance. Uh, we assisted low to moderate income taxpayers to claim about 19, or I'm sorry, over almost $2 million in earned income tax credits. And the child tax credit, um, as you know, we're in a lame duck session now, and it's unlikely, although um, ever since I was a kid and heard Mr. Jackson say this, it's been part of my uh, mantra as well. I keep hope alive. <laughs> so I keep hope alive that they will expand this child tax credit because it's obvious, it's been seen what it's done, what changes it's made in the lives of the children in this country. And when they did the first expansion, uh, our taxpayers were able to claim, again, almost $2 million in uh, child tax credits. Here are some of our partners. This, this is what the partnership and collaboration looks like at um, Nevada Free Taxes Coalition. And with that, I will conclude my presentation. Thank you for allowing me to speak in front of you. Um, I want to invite you to join us for the NFTC Awareness Day, the annual Awareness Day. It's the 17th annual Awareness Day. It's going to be held at Nevada Partners on January 27th. And it's a vehicle to just to get the word out about what we do, who we are, and how we can serve the community. Thank you so much, Ms. Mobley. Are there any questions or comments from the board? We just thank, you. thank uh, all the work that Nevada Free Texas Coalition does on behalf of our community, and hopefully we can forge stronger partnerships for you to come and help our mutual um, customers, uh, because we know there's probably lots in our different public housing de developments, affordable housing projects that need uh, this much needed assistance without having to uh, pay for it. So we appreciate it. Thank you. And we need volunteers desperately. OK. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jordan, this concludes all the presentations from the community for this meeting. Yes, and it also concludes my report, Madam Chair. Thank you. And I just want to make sure the, ref the record reflects that Commissioner Turner is no longer uh, part of the meeting. She had to resume her duties and her roles in her workplace. So I just want to make sure that for the vote count, um, we know that she's no longer with us. Thank you. Okay. All right, we're going to go ahead and move on to the new agenda item number eight that was posted as seven. Uh, that is uh, human resources. These are all items for discussion, discussion and possible action. The first one will be for human resources. Request for approval of the Employee Workplace Guide. And I'll invite Ms. June Fleming up to provide some background to the board. Good afternoon, commu uh, commissioners. My name is June Fleming. I'm the Human Resources Manager for the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. Um, what I'm looking to do is where I'm re requesting approval for the Employee Workplace Guide. Uh, the Employee Workplace Guide is going to be the replacement for the current personnel rules and regulations uh, that was dated July 10th, I mean, June 10th, 2010, to include revisions uh, dated September 20, 2012. When I arrived here at the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority, I thought the handbook was, was going to be renewed or revisited. However, it was the same handbook that I had when I previously was here. So in essence, what happened is we needed to take a look at it. So a group of us, including the department heads, uh, went through the handbook from front to cover and determined that we were not going to be able to salvage the current handbook that we had in the previous format. Uh, there were changes in the employment law, rules, regulations as well as internal factors and external factors that impacted the housing authority 
uh, which meant that we had to go from scratch. Our legal counsel also uh, reviewed the employee uh, workplace guide and deemed it to be legally sufficient. And of course, in accordance with Article 49 of the Collective Bargain Agreement, uh, we had to uh, actually uh, uh, send, send a draft over to the uh, union for review. We met with the union. Uh, uh, they uh, pretty much agreed with everything. Right now, I just wanted to give you uh, the point where there's going to be ongoing discussions we're currently having regarding compensation. Um, currently within the handbook or the workplace guide, the current rules that are in the personal handbook as well as the CBA are uh, incorporated in the employee workplace guide. If there's going to be any modifications, what we'll be doing is then we will update the employee guide. What I like to say is at least with this particular document, uh, there's mechanisms to update the guide uh, either on an emergency basis that was brought up uh, to your attention by the executive director as well as uh, annual updates if required for that employee workplace guide so that we can uh, maintain, maintain currency as far as employment laws, rules, and regulations. Uh, the other thing is we're going to be agile as far as being able to uh, meet any form of uh, emergencies. Uh, the example that I want to do is give you COVID-19 where we had to act immediately as far as giving some form of protocol or information to staff as far as how we're going to operate. Are there any questions? Okay. Um, any questions from the commissioners about the content of the revisions that is before us for adoption? Just one quick uh, request from some of our commissioners is that if they could have a printed copy so that they could review. Um, I would say upon request, we could make sure that we copy it for them to read it. We, we have all 250 pages mm -hmm. available right now. So yes, we do have it. Okay. Commissioner Craig. So my question is, this is the revision. This is, it's done and finished. Yes. Mm -hmm. The final product. And that's what I'd like to get. Yes, and we have the final product available, okay. yes. So may the record reflect that Commissioner Craig is requesting a copy, and then any other commissioner that wants one, you can email Mr. Jordan directly and request yours, too. Correct. Thank you okay. much. Right. Vice Chair McCurdy? You're Thank good? you, commissioners. All right. Do I have any motions, then, to adopt this uh, request for approval of the Employee Workplace Guide? And do we want to rearticulate, Ms. Mahogany, um, that... In that emergency yes the the um, amendment that will be included will say before implementation of an emergency administrative policy the executive director will consult and receive authorization from board leadership move for approval with the amendment with as amended I, I second motion. All right. we have a first and a second all those in favor please signify by stating aye aye, aye. any opposed Motion carries. Okay, we'll move down to agenda, new agenda item number nine. It was formally posted as eight. This is under procurement, approval to write off one fleet asset. And I do see we have- Mr. Shaw. Mr. Shaw coming. Good afternoon, commissioners. Johnny Shaw, procurement manager. Um, item nine, uh, the approval of the write off of uh, one of our fleet vehicles. Um, it's an affordable housing um, fixed asset, F-150-1997. It's reached its end of life, 25 years old, um, with uh, approximately 111,000 miles on it. What do you mean 25 is too old? <laughs> I have a 2008, 200,000 miles on it. <laughs> but due to safety uh, concerns for our staff, uh, we're recommending uh, or requesting the executive director requests the approval uh, to approve the disposition and disposal of the item detailed and the tactic attached exhibit and documentation. Any questions? Just for clarification, this will go to an auction. It yes, will I go did. to the highest bidder. And Absolutely. then does the money come back to the agency? Yes, it does. Okay. Any? Fred likes to see the money. Okay. Any other questions, uh, Commissioner Craig? I just read it and I was very excited about it because I ride the 
ride the bus and I'm just, it was a little smirky, let me just say sometimes. And these old bones just can't handle all that kind of stuff. So I'm glad you're getting a new vehicle. Thank you. So I'll entertain a motion if there are no further questions from our <coughs> board. I have a um, motion to approve to write off this fleet asset, the first uh, or the motion being made by Commissioner Desmond and the second from Commissioner Craig. All those in favor, please signify by stating aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. Are you also here to address new agenda item 10, formally posted as nine, request for approval of contract increase for Patterson and Associates, LLC? I am. Okay. Uh, background on uh, February 8, 2022, the Procurement Contracts Department received an approval, approved requisition from the Executive Office to request uh, RFQ uh, from qualified vendors to provide labor materials and equipment as required for IT consulting services. As pursuant to the scope of work, an approved requisition of $9,875 was entered and approved for the preliminary assessment of uh, the agency's IT department. Uh, Patterson and Associates uh, was then uh, part of the uh, RFP evaluation uh, process uh, that we held uh, for a more extensive uh, dive into the IT department, and he was award that uh, Patterson and Associates was a, was approved for 150,000, which was under the uh, uh, threshold of our executive director. So we're coming back to the board. Um, for an additional uh, 269,000, as Mr. Patterson has already um, briefed you on his uh, presentation to the board. If there are any questions uh, related to the four solutions, uh, Mr. Patterson is still here to uh, address those questions. If you have any procurement questions, I can address those questions. And I also wanted to make the record clear that this is not all directly to Mr. Patterson. This is for licenses and services and things of that nature. In addition, I do see the um, outline here uh, underneath this agenda item, mm -hmm. Mr. Jordan, where it says annual docuware licenses, $50 mm -hmm. per user per month times 150 oh. users, 90,000. Docuware support, 15,000. Docuware implementation integration config configuration to Yardi, 30, and total for docuware is 135,000. So in total, all of these combined are the 269? That's yes. correct. So it's a combination of deployment of these technology efficiencies plus probably some time for the work to happen. Is there some time that Mr. Patterson is compensated within the scope or that's already accounted for in the initial agreement that we have with him? Just no, I, to be I think clear. Go ahead. It's all inclusive. Okay, yeah, it's it's all so his time plus the technology yes. upgrades. Yes. Okay. Action uh -huh. oh, go ahead, go ahead Mr. Shaw. Action requested uh, the executive director is requesting the board to review and approve the increase of, to contract C22042 for Patterson Associates LLC for the IT consulting services for SNARA in the amount of 269000 uh, for a total contract not to exceed a 419000 all right, um, I just wanna, before I open it up to questions, request that on a quarterly basis, we receive um, an update on successes, celebrations, mm -hmm. uh, improved efficiencies in the different departments. As I think the board is very interested in learning about the benefits of this investment. We know it's an investment in uh, you know, moving the, the efficiencies of our agency forward. I think we would wanna just kind of get a, Hi highlights they don't have to be in but just it helped this department accomplish this more it ha help in helped over here with reducing this and um, with burnout or whatever the case may be maybe we even have things that were uh, celebrated by our own employees I think that's all just kind of helpful for the board to hear that we're moving the ball continuing to move the ball the right direction with technology implementation Absolutely. madam chair uh, if I may I would just say that I would like a full detail report okay um, All right, he's even yeah, more yeah, I, I would say that it, it's, it's necessary that we have one. Um, we have to make sure that we are accountable for the dollars that we're spending. And uh, as much information that we have, the more we will be able to be uh, able well, to Well, confidence, build confidence and continue to, to invest because we know this is of course. the starting point and probably not done with the level of investments we need to make. But I think it will give the board peace of mind and knowing we're going in the right direction. 
duly noted. And, and again, I want to also mention that as we make these changes and implementations, this will lead to also the selection and development of a new IT director that will carry these processes on. And then I'm just going to note for the record, there's other solutions here like AVIC network management tool for 24,000. Mm -hmm. There's um, annual hosting dashboards tie into Yardi 40,000 and also workflow and automation platform services for 70. I missed that in the other articulation of investments. I want to make sure I wasn't remiss, but I do want to also highlight that it's stating here that this could be cost savings to us as an agency of 200 to 450,000. So we that's are investing correct. 269, but we might be getting ROI that's even worth more than what we're investing. So it's important to highlight that. Okay. All right. There's no further questions. One more question, one more comment by Commissioner Craig. ROI is return on our investment. These acronyms Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to, I know that's what it is, but some people may be, what are you saying about the ROI? I read the books too, I read the acronyms. Okay. Duly right. noted. Uh, move for approval. I have a first by Vice Chair McCurdy. Second. Second by Commissioner Black. All those in favor, please signify by stating aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. You, Mr. We'll Shaw. move on to supportive services. It's a uh, former agenda item 10 now, newly agendized item 11, request for approval to use reserve funds up to 135,000 to purchase special order 2022 Ford SC-AS 14-passenger wheelchair shuttle bus to transport Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority residents. And I know Commissioner Craig is elated about this one. So who will come and speak to us about this procurement? Lee Quick will. Good afternoon, Lee Quick, Supportive Services Manager. Uh, I just really appreciate the opportunity to present to you on this item. So our uh, department, Supportive Services, transports uh, to doctor's appointments, group grocery shopping, uh, taking residents to vote. I should say that residents, <laughs> transporting residents, taking them to vote, bringing them to this board meeting, picking up donations, et cetera. So it's our practice over um, the years to have two uh, wheelchair accessible vehicles available so that we can do all of these things and more and because of the number of residents that we um, transport some of which um, have wheelchairs either temporarily or permanently and let me just take a moment to um, really shout out and, and thank our two drivers AJ and Antonio they're wonderful right um, so we get they work with kindness and professionalism we get a lot of great feedback about them from not only um, residents but staff as well because they do things for staff too so um, one of the things that they also do is to help us manage our fleet as in you know they they know what, what the, what's happening with the fleet and all that and so they pointed out to us um, that we have one <laughs> wheelchair accessible vehicle now again we had two we had to uh, put one up for auction we couldn't repair it and Clark County Fleet Services let us know that was it <laughs> there's that, that one is kaput so now we need another one um, we are down to one as I said and I'll just give you an example recently we had we were down to zero because the one was out for auction already and then the one that we have the one that we have um, went down. So we were not able to transport residents that have wheelchairs at that time. It was a short period of time, but we never want that to happen. So our request today is to purchase a second wheelchair accessible vehicle. Again, we, we typically have two. And to use central office cost to do that. Um, and it's not in our supportive services budget. So that's why we're making this request today. Thank you, Ms. Quick. Any questions for Ms. Quick? I just want to say the guys are great. I'm used to discourtesy, riding on buses. These guys know how to say things, and that matters a lot. They know how to say no, and it's so wonderful. You say, oh, they said no. They're excited about it. These are great guys, and I think they need to be because they're safe, too. I've never gotten nervous riding with any of them. I just want you all to know that it's worth it. They're great guys. Thank you. Thank you. Move for approval. I have a first from Commissioner McCurdy to move agenda item. 11 and a second from Commissioner Sagerbloom. All those in favor, please signify by stating aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. All right, we'll move on to newly agendized item number 12, formerly 11, um, and this is election of the chair, a new chairperson. So my term has come. Uh, we're going to do chair first. So in our accordance with our Article 3, Section 7 of our bylaws, the board selects a chairperson to serve for a year, and I think I'm over 
my term. Um, it's been a pleasure to serve you all, commissioners, and uh, our residents of the Housing Authority. And um, I'm sure that he's been taking good notes over here <laughs> to, to be a successor. I think that sometimes we elect our vice chairs to make sure they're getting that preparation and that level of proximity to issues that leadership is afforded to be grooming the next person in line. And so I'll just go ahead and open it up to nominations. So I would move for uh, nomination of William McCurdy to be the new chairman of the Housing Authority. I second, second. the motion. All right, so I have a motion to um, vote for chairperson, um, Vice Chair McCurdy, and a second by Commissioner Craig. Is there anything else I need to do, Ms. Mahogany, to be in compliance with election rules? Just call for the vote? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, so all those in favor of Vice Chair McCurdy being the new chair, please signify it by stating aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries and congratulations, <laughs> Vice Chair McCurdy. All right, and so now he's vacating his vice chair position and we need a new vice chair. And so we'll uh, open it up for nominations for the vice chair position. At this time, I would like to make a motion to nominate Commissioner Tick Segerbloom to be the vice chair of the Board of Commissioners. If you'll accept that. Second. Will you, ex and I forgot to ask you if you accepted, but uh, we're like, you were, it's too late sorry. Now we voted. We voted. <laughs> Do you accept the nomination? I <laughs> accept, and I would say my first uh, official act, if I get it elected, I'm going to replace that microphone. Oh, okay. Yeah, nice. <laughs> he's going to start moving and shaking things as vice chair. All right, so um, he's accepted. We have the first from. Commissioner Black and a second from uh, newly elected Chair uh, McCurdy. All those in favor, please signify by stating aye. Aye. Any opposed? Congratulations, new Vice Chair Sager Bloom. All right, and that ends our items open for discussion and possible action. And so we'll open it up to our last comment by the general public. Um, comments by the general public are items. Items raised under this portion of the agenda cannot be deliberated or acted upon by the Board of Commissioners for the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority until the notice provisions of the open meeting law have been complied with. If you wish to speak on matters not listed on this posted agenda, please step on up to the podium, clearly state your name and address, and spell your last name for the record. Welcome back. Thank you. Congratulations, gentlemen. I am sad that... We were losing our female representation know, on the leadership you know, you board, know, but it's issues. okay. You know, I got issues, <laughs> but that's a good thing. Um, first of all, my first name is Marlene, last name is Kuvison. It's, it's spelled C as in Charlie, O as in Oscar, U as in Unicorn, V as in Victory, S as in Sam, O as in Oscar, N as in Nancy. I currently live at 336 North 10th Street, apartment 120. Las Vegas 89101. And I'm here briefly just to um, state my concern about the patio gate that is on the Mystique in North 10th Street of Robert Gordon Plaza. I actually have some pictures. I'm sorry I don't have enough for everyone. It's very costly, but you can share. I have a copy for you, sir. Briefly give you the, the gist. On October 12, 2022, um, I was informed by the um, security um, that is in place he, for Robert Gordon Plaza that someone unscrewed the the panel, which I have here, to the gate that I had a lock on. My gate has been, um, after that, uh, I contacted the office on, the, on Linden Street, and they came and said that I needed to remove the lock. However, I didn't have the key, and I gave them verbal permission to cut the lock. They, it was not done. The lock, as you can look through the pictures, um, was the lock was ne this was never as you can see because I have it never replaced and it wasn't until December 5th that someone actually came and screwed in some other um, 
panels and put a chain on it. In that meantime, somebody came in. Sorry, I'm a little nervous. Stole my mother's wheelchair. My mother is bed bound. Um, uh, I'm not I'm a person. I'm not sure if they're homeless or whatever. Came onto my patio. Um, I I went to the office, reported to to maintenance. They said it was not a high priority. Um, I went back um, uh, after December 5th and ex expressed my concern. And I was told that they secured the gate, and there's, the pictures are there, um, to show what they did. And I asked about my personal safety, and I was told that if you don't feel safe, you should just move. I was very disappointed at <laughs> um, that response. And so I'm here to ask that we can literally, what else can we do? I actually contacted the fire inspector for this area. He said that gate is not supposed to be secured, and if there's a door on there, it's supposed to have a panic hardware in case of emergency of a fire or anything of that nature. I'm willing to talk to anybody specifically about the, the, all the experiences that I had, because I, I can't, I, I'm living in fear. Not deep fear, but I literally sleep with um, a wooden stick and unfortunately another item for my personal safety. And my mother, and my mother can't, if something happens, she can't get up and walk out or, you know, anything, so. Mr. Jordan, who can um, continue the conversations with the resident? I I'll resident? start it right after this meeting. Okay, much appreciated. Yeah. And thank I you appreciate it, and thank you. Happy holidays to you and your family, and God bless you. Happy thank holidays you. to you. Thank you so much. Um, with that, are there any comments from the board? Well, there's more public comment. Oh, there is more public comment. Okay. Hi, Miss Rose. Come on up. <laughs> haven't seen me in a while. Hi, Welcome. Madeline Rose. Hi, Madeline. Marble Manor, 914 West McWilliams Avenue. Um, Marble Manor Resident Council President. I want to, one, first and foremost, wanted to come and first thank the uh, Mr. Jordan and the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority for um, their accolade to resident ambassador youth Kaylee Rose for the CNI rendition and logo that you guys will be seeing as you've been seeing it that um, was done by Kaylee Rhodes, a resident youth ambassador in the community. Um, so I wanted to thank you guys again for that plaque which they presented to her last month. Um, I also wanted to kind of update you guys on things that's happening within Marble Manor that you know that's the importance of the community growth, community unity, um, as well as co-working relationships. Um, in over 18 years, there has not been a washer and dryer there at the Marble Manor property. I am proud and happy to say that we have washers and dryers for Marble Manor residents. There's five washers, five dryers, and it's going to be free to them. So, <laughs> so they, so they're going to be they're ecstatic about that, and it's been long anticipated and long um, advocated for, and so now that's coming into fruition, and so they're very excited. But not only does that come to the community, but also a job position is coming to the community as well, as there will be a laundry tenant that will be coming, a resident being a, uh, the, the tenant for that, as well as looking from our understanding, maybe even the, uh, the community center helping out in that aspect too, so that actually giving them self-sufficiency, longevity. And at a point in the time, it was going to be a six-month pilot program, but I said, mm, we need longer than that. We need, you know, we need consistency. Our bills are consistent, so we don't need a you know, trial basis. So nonetheless, they heard the request and they obliged. And so now there would be a position for a resident. So I thought that would be very important to vocalize because so often we hear a lot of things that are wrong as there are a lot of things that are wrong. But also to give a little hope, I did want to make note to that. Um, and we also are having our first um, elder appreciation Christmas holiday dinner and celebration coming up soon. So that's our first having it. So it's a lot of first times are happening and coming into place. And so I just want to thank everybody for showing up. When you show up, it's important because it represents that you agree, you know, and you are in this fight with us. So again, thank you and congratulations everybody for your new positions. Look forward to seeing how we work healthy together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your leadership.
as well at Marble Manor and for all the good work you're doing. So we appreciate your leadership. And um, I just want to wish everyone a very happy and joyous holiday season. Yeah. I just want to know if anybody want to sing or to sing for you. No. <laughs> I'm going to move to address. <laughs> Any final comments, Mr. Jordan, or we're ready to adjourn the I meeting? I think we're ready to adjourn. Do we need, we don't need a vote on this one, do we? Just for the LLC ones? Okay. okay. All right. So with that, everybody, please stay safe. Enjoy your family. Um, and uh, wishing everyone a bright and amazing 2023. And with that, I move to adjourn this meeting.